Well, hi there. If I look a little bit disheveled, I apologize. I just got done wrestling a giant anaconda. You know how it is. Something you might also know if you follow this channel fairly regularly is that I love every reptile. I, I honestly, I cannot think of any reptiles that I don't love, but I do have favorites. Sometimes I say that something is one of my favorites, but every now and then I say that something is my favorite. The Mata Mata is one of my favorite turtles. The common snapping turtle is my favorite turtle. I'm not sure if the Gila monster is my favorite type of lizard, but it might be. It might be the lizard species that I most would like to keep. It is definitely my favorite North American lizard. And I want to take just a minute to tell you why it might be my very favorite of all lizards. Gosh, where to start? This is one of the most awesome looking and beautiful of all reptiles. People freak out over earless monitors, and I think they look like reclusive, visually impaired brown Gila monsters. These guys are bright orange and black. They're just incredible. This particular Gila monster is Moki, and he comes to us from Scales and Tails Utah, which is an awesome company that shows incredible reptiles like this one and crocodilians and giant snakes and amazing birds and all kinds of cool things to people all over the place in Utah. And then on top of that, they've got some really cool social media spreading this sort of information and love of reptiles all around the world. So we'll have some links to their social media down in the description. Please check them out because they're awesome. Moki here is actually in shed and even so, he just looks glorious and you can see places like on his snout where the black is starting to come through because he's already shed. Oh my gosh, these things are just off the charts when it comes to beauty. And I know it's a little bit after Halloween, but we're filming this in October. How perfect is this? I've honestly always found the coloration of the Gila monsters to be even more striking than that of their larger cousins, the Mexican beaded lizards. And that head. I don't even know where to begin on this head. For starters, it's covered in osteoderms like a crocodile and they're fused to the skull. So even if you see the skull of a Gila monster, it looks basically just like this, except for the lips are gone and you can see the colossal dagger teeth they have. Speaking of those teeth, those teeth are wedged inside of some really powerful and incredible jaws. And those jaws happen to be extra burly because the venom glands are in the bottom jaw and uh, so they kind of show that off. Oh man, this head, this head. I don't know if there's anything else that comes close. Maybe Carnotaurus. Today's video is sponsored by Ridge Wallets. Ridge Wallets do really well when it comes to handleability. They're a very practical size, easy to just slip in your pocket. When it comes to care, perfect score. They require like zero care because they're durable and hardcore. When it comes to hardiness, again, this thing is like virtually bulletproof and they have a lifetime warranty. So even if you do break it, no worries. When it comes to availability, well, the Ridge Wallet is available online at our link, ridge.com slash Clint. When it comes to upfront costs, I will tell you, this is not a super inexpensive wallet. You also get what you pay for and it's a really nice product. And if cost is an issue, if you use our link, ridge.com slash Clint, you get 10% off. If what you want is something that will honestly last forever, the rest of your life, because it's got a freaking lifetime warranty, then the Ridge Wallet might be the perfect pet wallet for you. Like I mentioned, those teeth are enormous. They're kind of like the teeth of a sand tiger shark, just long skinny dagger teeth, and they'll just chew the heck out of you. Uh, the big difference is when these chew on you, instead of having kind of weak shark jaws, they've got powerful lizard jaws that inject neurotoxic venom. No big deal. And that normally wouldn't be a pro, but it is for me. This is one of those animals that people fear that probably doesn't deserve the fear. And those are my favorite kinds of animals. I love them because when people discover that they don't need to fear animals that terrified them before, it makes them wonder what else they fear about nature that was totally unwarranted. Everybody loves a chinchilla. Finding out you love chinchillas just makes you a decent human being. But discovering that you love something that most people fear, that changes your life and your relationship to nature. Oh, you are powerful. You're a powerful guy. 
Oh, I really want to let you lick my nose, but I shouldn't. That's a terrible idea. This is probably the main reason I shouldn't have a Gila monster. And honestly, it is one of the problems is they can lull you into a sense of security with them. But you're so pleasant and wonderful. I just love this guy. <laughs> All right, back to the show. Uh, you might have picked this up by now, but I want one. But I don't have one. And I'm really not sure if it's the right pet for me. So I guess I'm going to have to score the Gila monster based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. Maybe then I'll be able to find out. And maybe it will help you decide if the Gila monster is the best pet lizard for you while I'm at it. When it comes to handleability, gear up for this one, we give the Gila monster a score of three out of five. Three? Are you out of your mind? Maybe, but let me explain. You might notice that I've been holding this lizard the whole time. That's because it isn't that hard to do. They aren't as flexible as monitor lizards or snakes. They are really a lot like a blue tongue skink to hold, except with giant hands. And there's that other thing. Uh, and this might be the thing that you're shouting at your computer. They're venomous. But how venomous are we talking about here? Well, here in the reptile room, I have a few venomous creatures. We have all sorts of spiders, including some black widows. I don't touch those. We have hog-nosed snakes, which are arguably venomous, and false water cobra that is venomous and did bite me. Oops. We have a Vietnamese giant centipede, which scares the heck out of me. You may know that earlier this year, I handled several king cobras, including Lilith at Nerd. I will never touch this centipede. It's difficult to safely touch it with 10-inch tongs. It's just terrifying. Gila monsters don't scare me at all. That said, it would be unwise to not take proper precautions. Their bite is massively painful. They chew on you with huge dagger-shaped teeth, they hold on for a long time, and they inject you with neurotoxic venom. I like neurotoxic venom because it doesn't eat away at your tissue, like would have happened to me if I'd been bitten by the Gaboon Viper that was sitting on the table at Nerd. That was a scary day. As long as you don't die from neurotoxic venom, you probably will be fine. And there's no record of anyone ever dying from a Gila monster bite. That's not to say that it's impossible, but so far so good. And that's important since no antivenin exists for Gila monster bites. So what am I saying? What I'm saying is be respectful, hold them correctly, and you shouldn't get bitten. If you ever are bitten, you're going to have a pretty bad day, and then you will have a righteous story to tell. You probably know that I'm not into keeping hots, but I do like me a lukewarm reptile from time to time. Other than the bite, which is as easy to avoid as that of a blue tongue, there really isn't very much to fear. The lizard is big and ro robust enough to tolerate handling without much risk to the lizard. Given their relatedness to monitor lizards, I would be very surprised if they can drop this tail. You know how much I love it when a lizard can't drop its tail. I certainly have no evidence that they're capable of doing so. These claws, even though their feet are very big and their arms very strong for digging, they're honestly a lot like blue tongue's claws, which means, you know, they hurt a little bit at times, but you're not gonna, like, need to get stitches or anything. This is just as exciting and dangerous to most people as a rattlesnake, but much safer in reality than a rattlesnake. Heck, more people have been killed by choking to death in cockroach eating contests than killed by Gila monsters. In fact, more people have died in every way that a person can die than have been killed by Gila monsters. But definitely handle them with care. I won't die if my foot gets run over by a truck, but I still try to avoid it. I'd like to take just a minute to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon, who are going to help fund my legal battle with the state of Utah so that I can get a Gila monster in the near future. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. These are the awesome things made possible because of all that you do for this channel. Don't you think we need a Gila monster? The world needs more Gila monsters in it. When it comes to care, we give the Gila monster a score of four out of five. This is actually pretty much like keeping a blue tongue skink, which gets a 5 out of 5, except it eats what monitor lizards eat, so it loses a point. These guys come from the desert, but that doesn't mean that they like it dry and hot. They spend a lot of their time down in humid burrows, and they m modify their activity as far as what times of day they're active in order to avoid extreme heat. We recently did a video about a blue tongue enclosure build, and that enclosure would honestly be just great for a Gila monster. 
We used the four foot by two foot by 18 inch PVC enclosure from Zen Habitats. We'll actually have a link to that down in the description if you're thinking about an enclosure for your Gila monster or your blue tongue. We used a sand and topsoil mix with a little bit of peat moss and that will hold humidity and a burrow. So that's what a blue tongue needs. It's also what our bodacious Gila monsters need. They do need a, a hot basking spot, not like uh, you know, maybe a savanna monitor basking spot, nothing like that, but a fairly hot basking spot. And I would recommend achieving that with a mercury vapor bulb. They'll need a water bowl and hides, including humid hides, because even though they come from the desert, they hang out where it's humid. As for their diet, a lot of whole prey, insects, some vertebrates. You can also supply some other meat like ground turkey, but be careful about obesity. Uh, definitely include calcium and vitamin supplementation. And, and one thing, that is a big deal with these guys is rumation. You may, if, if you can get them to the right temperatures, you may cool them for a good chunk of the year and they won't be eating in that time, which will make them more reasonable to keep and it will probably extend their lifespan as well. When it comes to hardiness, we give the Gila monster a score of five out of five. Really, a lizard isn't gonna get any more hardy than this. All of them that you're going to keep legally are captive bred. And so this is a big part of the reason for this. Uh, obesity is gonna be the biggest issue that you're gonna need to look out for, especially fatty liver disease that can be a consequence of too high fat of a diet. The thing is, these guys love to eat and it's fun to feed them and it's fairly easy to feed them and it's easy to feed them too much. So definitely make sure you're not giving them too much fat or just too much to eat in general. But Otherwise, if you give them what they need, they really should thrive for you. When it comes to availability, we give the Gila monster a score of two out of five. This is the tough one. These aren't legal in a lot of places. Uh, they are a native species that isn't overly abundant in the United States, so they are prohibited within much of their range. They're also venomous, so a lot of places are against that. It's very likely that you will need permitting wherever you are and it may or may not be easy to get such a permit. However, in states where no such permits are needed, I've seen them at expos. They aren't going to be common in pet stores at all, but they're pretty easy to find from some totally rad breeders online. If you're gonna get one legally, it's pretty easy to get one. The main thing is getting the permits. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Gila Monster a score of two out of five. The lizard itself is relatively expensive, even compared to blue tongue skinks, which are fairly expensive. That said, and I say this fully acknowledging how cool blue tongue skinks are, this is way cooler than a blue tongue. I know. The other expenses will be pretty much the same thing that a blue tongue is gonna need. They're gonna need an enclosure. They're gonna need heat and UVB lights, which can all be wrapped into one package if you go mercury vapor. They're gonna need a substrate that holds a burrow. They're gonna need a water bowl. They're gonna need hides, including a humid hide. And then you're done. Just an expensive blue tongue that's even radder than a blue tongue. In conclusion, we give the Gila monster an overall score of 3.2 out of five. 3.2 is a massively high score for a notoriously venomous lizard that is prohibited in most places. And yet here we are, I need some permits. If what you want is one of the coolest lizards in the world, and you're willing to jump through a lot of hoops to get it, and you know that it might lay a nasty bite on you at some point, then the Gila monster might be the perfect pet lizard for you. I'm sold. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Hey, oh yeah, you're a little bit huffy. Are you a little huffy? Are you a huffy venom potato? Yeah, you're a good boy. You're, a good boy. you're being so patient. I appreciate you. Thank goodness you don't have the monitor neck. You got the blue tongue neck. Oh yeah, huffity puff. I'm such a grumpy lizard. But not that grumpy. But if I get you, I'll chew like crazy. You want to see the dagger teeth? You seem to be a fan. Oh yeah, do it again. Stick that tongue out. I want to see if I can see those tooths. You are such a good lizard. Like you're not even trying to bite. You just like I would not like to be held like this for the whole evening. And you're just like, yeah. It's all good. That forked tongue. Delightful. You're the monitor blue tongue hybrid, painted by Halloween.
when it comes to, oh, sorry, were you telling me? Okay, no. that wasn't a, a baseball signal. No, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, 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 we'll we'll some good <laughs> that one appeared to be kill Jason. Yeah, you were right on that one. <laughs> okay, you, you were going for the throat. And I'm like, <laughs> no one's ever died, but no one's ever been bitten a thousand times in an evening. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is one of those situations at nerd was my first time holding a big alligator and they told me just to put my thumb around its neck to stop it if it came back at me and I'm like well I don't know how this really goes like until this alligator tries to come back at me it's either a situation where I can stop an alligator with my thumb or the alligator breaks my thumb and then grabs my arm and death rolls and it's awesome all around and uh, this is sort of one of those situations where it's like, you're pretty strong, how far can you push my finger? Ah, not far enough, no big deal. But, I, but every now and then,